the death of Beowulf. Um, I suppose I'm not that keen on Beowulf, it's not my favourite story, but the ending is rather wonderful. I think at the end, the writer sort of lifts the, the poetry to, to, to the level of, 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 of tragedy. And um, so the, the ending of the story is, is one I like to take, to tell. Uh, and you'll hear some of uh, Seamus Heaney's uh, translation mm. of Beowulf. Um, uh, his version is sometimes a little bit plodding because he's trying so hard to be accurate to the original text, but um, nonetheless, it's probably the best one we've got, we've got at the moment uh, from the more recent ones. So here it is then, um, The Death of Beowulf. Beowulf left Denmark after his victory over Grendel in the great hall of the heart and over his mother in the bottom of the lake. He went home to Gietland in southern Sweden, laden with treasure and fame. When the old king died, Beowulf became king and ruled for 50 years. Now, many centuries before, many centuries before, there had been a now lost race living in that land who had kept all their treasure in a stone roofed barrow. And when the last of that race knew he was coming to the end of his life, he said, Now, earth, hold what earls once held, and heroes can no more. My own people have been ruined by war. One by one they went down to death looked their last on sweet life in the hall. The companies have departed. The hard helmet, hasped with gold, will be stripped of its hoops. The coat of mail that came through all fights, through shield collapse and cut of sword, decays with the warrior. No trembling harp, no tuned timber, no tumbling hawk swerving through the hall, no swift horse pouring the courtyard. Pillage and slaughter have emptied the earth of my people. And then the last of his race placed the last treasure in the stone roof barrow and died. And with him died the secret of where the hoard of treasure was hidden. Well, after many, many years came a great dragon, a monster, a giant, a giant monstrous dragon, a giant monstrous fire breathing dragon came to that land and by chance found Barrow and went inside to live in it. This was a monster who could only be out at night. By day, he slept in the barrow, and of course he found all the treasure and soon came to regard the treasure as his own. He guarded it, counted it, ordered it. He knew each piece of his treasure. And so he lived there, peaceably for 300 years. And then, in the time of Beowulf, late in the time of Beowulf, there came a servant, running away from a cruel master, looking for somewhere to hide. And he too stumbled upon the barrow, the stone roof barrow. And it was daytime. 
looking for somewhere to hide, he went inside and found the great monster, the dragon, asleep, and also all the treasure. And he took away with him the jeweled goblet. Right. <laughs> when the monster woke up, saw immediately that he'd been robbed, he was incandescent. Well, that's the right word, I suppose, for a fire breathing dragon. <laughs> incandescent <laughs> with rage. Incandescent. Couldn't, it was only sunset, but he could barely wait until dark. And when darkness came, he rampaged throughout the Giet lands, burning up homesteads and farmsteads with his fiery breath. Night after night this went on, until at last he burnt down the hall of Beowulf and reduced the throne room of the king to ashes. And he also, that night, burned down all the watchtowers and forts along the coast. The Beowulf, old, tired, having ruled his lands fairly peacefully for 50 years, this catastrophe hit hard. He sensed that uh, the fate of the dragon and the fate of himself were coming together and would be settled together. He ordered his smith to make him a great iron shield. He knew that the, <laughs> the, the limewood shields of the Geat warriors, warriors would, would be burnt to a frazzle in, in no time by the breath of the, of the dragon, but an iron shield might hold. And when the shield was made, he gathered together a small band of his most elite warriors and went out to challenge he came to the barrow, the stone roof barrow, and he saw at the bottom of it uh, a, uh, a sort of uh, a, a cave into the barrow, stone roof, like stone arch, and from the, the hill emerged a stream. And he shouted into the tunnel of the cave, his his great challenge. He roared his challenge into the cave and it echoed off the surface of the water deep into the hill. So some passerby, if they heard, they would have thought they were hearing faint rumble of distant thunder. Well, the monster heard the challenge and woke up and came out and faced the challenge of Beowulf and his iron shield. At the first little whiff of fire from the dragon's breath, all the kit warriors just ran away. All except Wigs, uh, Wiglaf, young Wiglaf, <laughs> barely a youth, untried in battle. Yes, yes, but he stayed. He, he was the one who stayed. Beowulf and Wiglaf ran at the monster. And of course, immediately <laughs> Wiglaf's uh, uh, limewood shield was burnt to cinders. But under the shelter of the great iron shield, they closed with the monster and hacked at it. Beowulf's short sword shattered on the bony skull of the monster. But Wiglaf. His sword slipped easily to the hilt of the giant's belly. In his terrible agony, the monster bit into Beowulf's neck and the blood spurted out, but Beowulf still had the strength to draw his knife and deliver the fatal blow to the heart. Wiglaf 
bag master clear of the collapsing body of the monster. Their wolf was losing a lot of blood. And he knew there was poison in that bite and that he did not have long to live. For all that he had achieved, for all that he had achieved through all the years, he had no son. And he feared for the future of his people after his death. Wiglaf made his master as comfortable as possible, took off his helmet, bathed away as much of the blood as he could. When he felt his master was comfortable, went in to the barrow and came out with some of the treasure to show his master, showed him the treasure. And in Beowulf's final minutes, seeing that treasure was some comfort to him. He was leaving his people in a perilous condition, but at least they would have some wealth. And what great wealth can, can buy you peace for a while. Beowulf said, fate has taken away all the brave, high-born warriors of my clan. Now, now I must join them. And he died. Well, straight away, the, uh, the battle dodgers return. <laughs> Wiglaf abused them, and made terrible predictions of what must happen. Soon their enemies would know that Beowulf was dead, that the, the forts and the watchtowers on the coast were burnt away. Worst of all, that Geat warriors run away. Dane, Swede, Saxon, they all had their scores to settle. Soon they would fall like the wolf on the fold. And so it goes on. 